All right, everybody. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to One Objective tonight. Guys, we've got a really good show lined up for you. A guest that I'm really excited about having on, Michael Neal, Bass Pro Tour Angler. Like I say, if you've... If you don't know him, then you don't really follow, I'm going to say, the professional side of things. Uh, you know, I mean, he is he is one heck of a fisherman. Really made a name for himself. And, I mean, just he's just a heck of an angler. And and the reason why I like following Michael Neal so much is that I kind of relate to how he fishes. You know, he, he's... He does a little bit of everything, and he's able to catch fish. Now, I can't, I can't say I can relate to where I catch him everywhere I go, like he does. But just the way he fishes, he's methodical. He's that's what I like about him. So, um, excited to have him on tonight. Uh, but before we get into the show, guys, I just want to thank all of our sponsors. We got a great line of people that back back this show, uh, back us, and back everything we do. So, I just want to thank. Uh, Bonafide Kayaks, Yak Attack, Missile Baits, Falcon Rods, Acucol Power Pole, uh, Native Watercraft, and Bayuno Power. Guys, I want to thank y'all for supporting us. And please, guys, if you can, uh, we got them tagged in the links here uh, in the description of the show. Please go support them because they support us. Uh, really great company here. And also, one I left out that's going to be doing a giveaway tonight. Uh, he didn't send us the picture yet because he's probably really busy and I was late. Messaged him. But anyways, we will be throwing in a uh, RBT Custom Baits giveaway tonight, uh, like we have been doing the last several nights. So, like I said, don't have the uh, don't have the picture, but we will be getting you guys a uh, a complete uh, I'll say a complete a custom painted uh, crankbait. So, but anyways, before we kind of get into this too, Chris, how you doing tonight, man? Doing all right, pretty good. Yeah, did you have a good weekend? Did, didn't do nothing special this weekend, no, nothing, right? Nothing special, just the usual. Yeah. Sweet now, things. do we want to talk about our tabacery now, or do we want to talk about our tabacery later from when we went and fished the river? Uh, when is, when's Michael coming on? Uh, we'll have him on at 810, so. Yeah, we could go ahead and talk about the tabacery. Yeah, yeah. So, me and Chris go out. I mean, it really wasn't a bad day. No. But we got on film this time of a monster fish that I lost. You caught several good fish decent you know good quality i'm gonna say 14 inch fish he, yeah. i mean you had a good day he pulled out old faithful yeah of course got the old grub out started catching some fish they just wasn't hitting the water plopper i mean i did the two the one i caught the big one uh, a bigger one and then the biggest one i lost they came off a whopper plopper yeah but other than that they were, really wasn't hitting the whopper plopper no. much i mean it was kind of tough we got a lot of we caught a lot of fish i'll say up here in the rapids quantity but not very much quality yeah except for the ones you caught yeah, which was only that was only two, so. Well, the one you got, the one that, that uh, heart broke your heart. That yeah. was a, that was a good one. That yeah, we got that on film, yeah. and I'm putting I'm trying to put that smallmouth video together for us. I mean, it's not it's not an exciting video, but it's just you showing us yeah. up here on the river fishing and then you know catching some fish and uh, and all that. But I mean, we had a good time. Yeah, it was hot as all though. It was pretty after we yeah. got off the rapids. Yeah, it got hot once we started going back down. Yeah, the float down was. But we got on one stretch of bank there. We was catching pretty good with a shaky head too. They were all little ones, but yeah, but that was pretty fun. So we was able to to catch fish pretty much all the way down. Everywhere we went, we really caught fish. Just like say, yeah, just didn't catch any massive size or nothing. Yeah, and I'm building this spot up, man. I'm building it up hardcore. Well, I'm like wouldn't winning no tournaments with those fish. Yeah, no. I'm like Chris, man. We're gonna slay them today. We are gonna catch them. I'm telling you. That's twice that's happened. <laughs> I'm like, man, we're going to burn them. Sandy at the Yak Attack tournament. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to catch them all day long. Yeah, we're going to burn Everybody them. Everybody around us caught them, but yeah. we didn't. Yeah, I think I over-talked it. I talked it up, man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm telling Chris all about this. I'm like, man, this is the time of the year, dude. This is where we're going to burn them. The river was coming back down. That's a problem. We ran into a spot where you, a fallen river is tough to fish. Uh, a stabilized river or a, uh, a rising river is a little bit easier to fish for me anyways than it is a falling river. So, but anyways, we had a good time. Yeah. Uh, Chris Cable got his first spy bait fish yesterday. Oh man. I've had a couple fish hit a spy bait, but I have never fully caught a fish on a spy bait yet. I don't throw it a lot either. I don't, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't even know what it is. I got so. I actually got one over there, uh, beside that top water bait on the table as a little spy bait. Oh, okay. Uh, it's finesse style bait catching suspended fish stuff like that so um we congrats to that congrats to you on that buddy because that's uh i ain't been able to do it yet so but anyways like i say we're gonna have michael neal on tonight um 
we're going to be going over summertime fishing, the heat of the day fishing, which, like I said before, uh, the video we did before the show, we were talking about, you know, get your questions in before, um, as quick as you can, because we're going to try to get all these questions answered the best we can uh, after we kind of talk about his year so far and his tournament's going on right now. He is uh, he's in the middle of a tournament right now, so we're going to try to make things quick so he can get back and get some rest for the next day because they got a long day of fishing. So, uh, But we'll be calling him shortly. What time we got right now, Chris? 8.06. 8.06, so we'll call him shortly. But I kind of want to talk a little bit and guys if, if i don't cover it good enough uh before we have michael on we'll talk about it after but the state of what the kayak or this the fishing industry the outdoor industry is in right now i talked about it on the last show where it's even hard to get bicycles it's hard to get kayaks it's hard to get it's hard to get fishing tackle now in certain spots you know i mean dicks walmart all of them a lot of them can't even get a lot of the stuff now, I mean, a lot of it's from China, you know what I mean? Uh, stuff that's coming overseas, it's going to sit in, um, sit at the ports for a while, you know what I mean? Customs. So it's really tough to get tackle right now, but they now I've seen on Facebook where Hook One Outfitters down in Tennessee is going out of business. And it was just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, I really hate to see that. I hate to see any any business go out especially a company that you know has started from ground one and worked their way up i hate to see any business go out just because of what we're in right now you know it's that's tough um me and james are fortunate at, at the position that we're at that we don't have the overhead like like some of these other businesses do and so w- when we don't get kayaks cause we're new to it anyway so like none of our stuff is based off of kayak sales now, you had a lot of these companies like Bob's with Creek Outfitters, Journeys, all them. I'm sure they did really well this year, you know, with sales because they had the inventory in and already had a lot of it coming. Um, but I do believe if people could have seen this coming, there would have been a lot more boat orders going into winter. You know what I mean? Like, But you can't predict this. You, yeah. No one can predict this. So, and I've heard several several dealers talk, you know, if, if I seen this coming, I would have I would have spent a million dollars in boats, you know. Just, just to have them to sell, and I mean, it's crazy. You can't even buy a kid's kayak at Walmart right now. They do not have them. I mean, James was looking at trying to get something for one of his 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 littlest son, or uh, his son, and couldn't find it. I mean, he even went on the website trying to look one up just to get one. You know, could not find it. If you order it, it was gonna be October till you possibly had it. <laughs> so I mean, it's just a tough. It's a very tough time of the year. Um, and we'll discuss more. We can talk a little bit more about this if you guys want to later on. Uh, I, I try not to dig too deep into this stuff, but it's just the industry has gone crazy right now. And I don't understand what's, you know, I mean, the COVID stuff is crazy. And I know a lot of these companies had to shut down because of COVID and they weren't able to produce a lot of the product they need to produce. So uh, it's sad. I really hate to see it. And, and I feel bad for Hook One Outfitters. I feel bad for. A lot of the other dealers that are going out of business as well, tackle stores. I mean, it's just it's it's so many people that this is hitting hard now. So we'll see, man. I hope things work out for a lot of these other companies that are struggling right now, and then hope things get better for them. So we're the time to call Michael Neal now. Yeah, let's go ahead and call. All right, we'll listen to that Skype music. Y'all That's get ready for beautiful it. Beautiful Skype music. That's right. Dance party. <laughs> All right, we're getting them on. Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Man, I'm loving that backdrop right now you got going on. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> I, I think by far you got the best studio set up of anybody we've had on there. I know y'all are fishing a tournament right now, so you kind of got, um, you're in the studios for the MLF uh, Bass Pro Tour right now. So, But um, Chris is working up your scene, guys. Uh so y'all see him here in just a second as Chris gets everything built up. And then we'll have him, we'll have Michael Neal on. If, if y'all don't know who Michael Neal is, he is a, the bat, he's a pro on a Bass Pro Tour. Um, he's done really well uh, in his fishing career. Uh, he's a good methodical fisherman. And that's why we want to have him on tonight. We're not going to try to keep you real long. I know you're in the middle of a tournament right now. 
Uh, you're getting ready for the next to go out tomorrow, right? You're in the next uh, group going out tomorrow. Yeah, Group B uh, elimination round is tomorrow. So, and right now, I mean, I got it. You're 26 right now. Um, yeah, uh, cut a, cut myself a little bit of a hole yesterday, but uh, I mean, you've seen some of the weights some of these other guys have caught. There's uh, no no weight that's insurmountable here. So yeah, tomorrow's a different day. Just go out and do things a little different. That's right. I mean, you're not too far out from the cut line, you know. So I mean, ten pounds around about. So it's not it's not a hard deficit to make up if you get in a good spot and get a good flurry. Right. No. I mean, and these fish are so notorious. I mean, smallmouth they're just nomadic all the time, all their lives, except for the spawning process. So. I mean, some guys could really struggle, and some guys could really catch them. The, the wind's going to die down. It uh, looks like zero to five miles an hour. So that's going to affect a lot of guys, either not having wind or the current. Uh, that's a big deal up here on these Great Lakes, too, is wind-driven current. And there's going to be pretty much zero of that. So the fish are liable to do some, some pretty weird things tomorrow. It's going to take a lot of adjustments. Yeah. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I was reading on uh, MLF that they're allowing you guys to put in a different boat ramp. So are they allowing y'all to do that on this tournament here? If I read that right? Yes, they've uh, made the trailering pro uh, policy uh, to be done every day of the event for safety, um, which, I, in my opinion, was a great call. Uh, I actually used it the first day. It probably hurt me, but uh, that was one of those gambles I was I was willing to take. I went and put in on one side of the peninsula and wound up trailer into the other and pretty much lost my whole first period but i mean as a whole it's a great idea uh everybody knows these lakes up here can get extremely extremely rough i know they have been uh two or three days so far this week and looks like it's going to have some more bad weather so it's definitely a great call to be able to trailer go to any ramp safely and uh, not have to try and push your boat too far and i think that's pretty cool because we do a lot of the kayak tournaments as well and you have the ability to do that and to be able to see you guys do that as well, I think that's pretty neat. Uh, like I say, especially on the body of water you guys are on, where it just gets crazy fast. Um, you know, you ain't got to run so far down the lake, you know. So, I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, this place is huge. We've got <laughs> hundreds of miles of fishable water. And uh, to try and do that is just, it's not called for to have to try and push your equipment all the way to the limits. The chances of something breaking somebody get hurt that's just uh, a lot higher here than anywhere else in the country so i'm thankful for it yeah yeah i've always said you know i'm not said i've read that bass boats were not built for that kind of body of water you know they, they were built for regular lakes rivers all of that they were not built for i mean most boats ain't built for that kind of water up there except big ships you know so right, right. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about uh let's talk about the season i know it's you haven't had a long season right now. I know things are really starting to fire back up pretty good. Um, what did, how did you do, what did you do during the COVID shutdown kind of deal? I mean, did you kind of stay on the water as much as you can? I mean, you can't even go to much of the fishing expos. You can't do, I mean, it was nothing going on. So, I mean, what did you do in your downtime? I spent a little bit of time uh, at home on Lake Chickamauga, but honestly, I probably didn't fish, but maybe 10 days during that whole span. I just... I've got a tackle store at home. I worked around it quite a bit, and it was turkey season, so uh, <laughs> most of my time was probably spent in the woods uh, tur turkey hunting. Don't get to do that much every year because I'm on the road so much, but that's pretty much all I did. I mean, it wasn't really uh, anything exciting for me. Uh, it was a real small town where I live in Dayton and uh, really wasn't affected all that much by the shutdowns and this and that, so it was just uh, pretty much life as normal. Yeah, and that's kind of similar to how it was for us here like i mean there was some things you couldn't do you know restaurant wise you couldn't go in and go to restaurants but like fishing wise it really didn't it didn't shut it down much so i mean a lot of people that didn't have work they were just fishing even harder you know or like say turkey season coming in it was a lot of people that were i seen a lot of posts from a lot of pros turkey hunting you know so like say you don't you don't get that opportunity that often to do that Right. It was a great time for the outdoors industry as a whole. I mean, the, the license sales were through the roof. Um, like I said, I got that tackle store and I've seen people there that uh, never seen fishing in my life before. And they decided to take it up just to, to have something else outdoors to go do. So I think a lot of people got introduced to some new uh, pastimes that a lot of us enjoy. And uh, hopefully along the way, some kids got introduced to it as well. 
Oh yeah, for sure. I I, I helped out a uh, another a retail store off and on, um, and just kind of seeing new people coming in, you know, and, and getting into fishing, getting into kayaking, uh, people getting into I know like biking and you know just all kinds of outdoor recreational stuff and. It is. It's an ama- It's a kind of an amazing time to see so many people wanting to get into it and and learn more about it. And like just with our show wise, I know we talked to a lot of people that had just got into fishing that's been watching our show, thanking us for for you know some tips and all, and all that stuff. To, so when they go out with their kids, they kind of know what to do or some things to try. So, but one question I did want to ask you since you're talking about your tackle store, and we were talking about this before we got you on is have you seen like have you had any issues with getting certain tackle in with everything going on i know some companies are struggling right now with yeah yeah absolutely it's been uh it's a struggle really to get just about anything i mean and it's not necessarily because the companies are having uh any problems internally or being able to get it it's just so many people are out buying those products right now that the distributors can't keep them fast enough as soon as they get them, they're going right back out the door. I mean, uh, we've done, uh, we usually do bi-weekly, if not three times a week, orders at the store, and we're getting maybe a third of the product that we're ordering. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, something to do uh, with everybody buying everything all at one time. There's some companies that you can still get stuff from, that, uh, especially the ones that were made here in the U.S. that didn't have uh, factories shut down from the regulations but those are few and far between yeah yeah it's it's not many but uh let's talk about your year man i know you're, you're glad to be kicking it back off and and getting back in the boat and, and, and fishing some tournaments and um what are you I, I know like i can't even really follow the schedule much now but y- y- y'all are in a, a phenomenal smallmouth fishery what are, what are you excited about what like are you excited about getting to next after after this uh, well, this is the final stage of the Bass Pro Tour, um, but we've got two more FLW Super Tournaments that I'm fishing. So the one that I would say I was looking forward to the most out of these uh, would be the Lacrosse Super Tournament, the Mississippi River. Uh, it's just a phenomenal fishery. We've also got the uh, Major League Fishing World Championship throughout the Cup events coming up, and uh, that one probably is the most exciting so far. I've never been a part of the World Championship, but through the cup events last year i got to qualify for that so that's coming up right after this tournament it'll be good uh but i mean lacrosse and the world championship is gonna be a good time yeah now when it comes down to kind of talking about fishing the bass pro tour and then your the regular mlf events same format you know i mean you still got your official you still got all that but on the on the mlf side you only got like what six six guys 12 guys something like that i can't remember how many is in it total now um that you're fishing against in a day what what gets your heart pumping more the this style of tournament or the regular mlf event that you fish with this small, smaller group of guys i would say the original format um i mean it's just you're out there against eight guys you know exactly what the cut line's got to be but everybody is on a 100 percent playing field there's no information no practice Everybody's got the same exact equipment. You've just got what you can pack, and that usually like a Z18 Nitro, um, smaller boat, 175 outboard engine on it, and everybody's the same. It's like taking a a step back in time almost to those smaller boats, but it's the sudden death round of it. There's nothing that compares to it. I mean, the knockout round of the Bass Pro Tour is somewhat similar, but that sudden death round when you show up to the ramp, they give you a map, they give you a cut weight, and then it's whoever can get to that weight the fastest. And that is just an unbelievable amount of pressure. I'd watched the shows for years, but until I was actually out there and a part of it, I never could really understand and totally believe the pressure that you go through out there on the water. <laughs> and in those events, I mean, you're kind of looking more for anything that bites. I mean, I, I, quali- I know everybody wants that quality fish, but... You know, it seems like if you watch a lot of those events, sometimes it's like the finesse style, either a guy going to the jig, flipping docks, or a shaky head, or drop shot, or something like that, seems like, until they start really figuring them out, but is that, I mean, is that kind of like your style, too? You like being able to just kind of pick up a shaky head, or drop shot, and kind of go in, or do you like to be more of a power fisherman when you go into it? 
to me, it's uh, really indifferent one way or the other. Fishing FLW for so long, we had uh, we went to a lot of clear water finesse type fisheries. So I had that built up, but we also power fished a lot. So I oftentimes try to do uh, a little bit of both. I try to throw smaller baits, more finessey baits, but fish them quickly. Like, for instance, a shaky head or a drop shot. Instead of setting my boat way out off the bank and making a long cast and working it all the way back, I may just cast quickly at targets, let it hit the bottom, just work it for a very short distance, reel it in, throw it again. And then once you develop that pattern, then you can slow down and throw a little bit bigger baits, pick stuff apart. But with these guys, you cannot have any lull in that format whatsoever. So just to figure out how to get bites the fastest, uh, that suits me well as well. So that's how I've always fished, even in the five fish tournament. When you go to Florida, it seems like everybody always talks about picking up a big flip and a stick and punching mats. Well, I never really did that in a tournament situation. I would just go down there throw a swim jig or a vibrating jig, cover water, and just cull through as many fish as I could in a day. So uh, there really wasn't a big transition for me fishing five fish tournaments to fishing the Bass Pro Tour Major League Fishing format. It's just a matter of covering water for me and just picking through them. And that's, that was actually one of the questions I was going to ask you. That's good because that, that's, that's what I always ask everybody when they come on is like, you know, what was the biggest adjustment going from a five fish limit to that? So like I say, your, your style is still the same. You're just trying to still catch as many fish as you can and wing through them until you figure out that sweet spot. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, uh to me, the biggest difference would be the amount of practice time. FLW, we got three days bass pro tour. We get one day and then until 6 PM. So, uh, you don't have enough time to scope everything out. You have to develop a pattern in practice or in the major league fishing cup format and just develop that pattern and just keep expanding on it as time goes you can't go out there and find everything that you need in a day and three quarters of practice and expect to do well anytime that i've done well i've built upon what i figured out in practice and just expanded throughout the tournament and oftentimes you just figure it out right before the last day or at the end of the knockout round that last little piece to put you over the edge yeah and that's that's what I was kind of get at too. You know, in a five fish tournament, you are you're catching your fish, but you also want to save that spot. You don't want to burn it up. Now, how do you do in an MLF style tournament, or let's say Bass Pro Tour style? Um, do you try to still catch as many as you can, and then just you know the following time, you, the next day you go out, you just try to find new water, or do you try to save a little bit? I mean, it's it's tough because you got to try to catch everything you can. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, a good example of that would be at Okeechobee the last year, or this year. I was leading the first day uh, of my group, and I actually zeroed the second day, but I 100% tried to catch everything I could that second day because the winner advanced straight on, and that's what we did this year. We changed the format a little bit to allow that to happen to where guys weren't just backing off of them. Mm -hmm. And your leaders could do that, but the guys down around the cut line never could let off, so... Now it's pretty much one of those things where you just hope you found enough fish that you can catch them and fish them as hard as you can throughout the whole tournament. Yeah. And Chris, you say we got a question? Yeah. Clay wants to know, how do you like the score tracker? I actually like it. I know a lot of guys don't. Um, and I always tell everybody, you can use it as a tool or you can let it go against you in, mentally. And what I mean by that is you can either let it get you down or you can take it and try and gain some information from it. You can know, okay, I'm either doing, if the score tracker's lighting up and you're not doing so well, you know one of two things. You're either in the wrong area or you're doing the wrong presentation of baits. So you know you've got to change at least one of those two and use that to your advantage. I mean, you just got to be able to understand how quickly you can make up ground once you make the adjustments. So it's uh, to me, I love it. And we actually fished a super tournament at Chickamauga, uh, about two weeks ago now, and the whole time I was out there thinking, man, I'd like to know what he's got. I wonder what he's got, but <laughs> couldn't do it with that format. So to me, the score tracker is an awesome tool, and uh, I know the fans really like it as well. Yeah, and I'm sure that you guys, that's when you start doing your homework on a lot of your anglers, you know, your top guys, because I, I know when you watch MLF, they're like, you know, such and such is doing this. I, I know he's throwing a top, or I know he's throwing a shaky head, or, or whatever, you know. So now you got some of you guys you can peek competing against you know that's in your in your head you know if kvd's winning you know 
man, he's probably cranking or throwing a spinner back. You know what I mean? Like it, it, that's in your mind. So now you kind of like feel like you got to research the anglers and kind of see what they're good at, you know? Right. But a lot of times that'll throw you in the exact opposite direction that you need to be. Yeah. Every time I've ever really said, man, that's so-and-so he's got to be doing this. I couldn't <laughs> have been further from the truth. It's yeah. sometimes it's right, but that's one of those things where you just got to use it to know they're either biting or they're not and just figure out how to catch them your own way it's it's so hard for somebody to i mean even tell you but much less try and guess what somebody's doing and then go duplicate it yeah so especially with the field of anglers you're fishing against now everybody's so versatile they can catch them either way they they can you know um so yeah it, it could be i could see that being very difficult but chris you say we got a question yeah clay also wants to know if, if you're in the middle of a tournament and don't have anything going, and you've tried your spots, what's your first move? Are you going to fish docks and riprap and release fish? Um, I usually just start on some kind of points. Uh, points are a great way to figure out what kind of depth range the fish want to be in. A lot of times they have uh, really deep water on them all the way up to the bank. So if you can find a longer, flatter point, and, uh, some, and you want to try and find some on the main lake, some back in a pocket, just depends on what time of year it is but when you figure out what kind of depth you're getting bit on off that point it tells you what kind of stuff to go run look for that same depth of water in different places and we got one more chris yeah cole wants to know would, would you have rather fish champlain uh for me personally probably yes i'm more of a largemouth guy but sturgeon bay here is uh, a world-class smallmouth fishery and I don't think that we would have seen the weights at Champlain that we have here. So that's just one of those personal uh, agenda questions, but it's probably a better event for Major League Fishing here at Sturgeon Bay. Well, it's hard to turn down a good, I mean, like say, even if you're a good, you're, you love largemouth fishing, you know you're going to a fishery that's top notch with some of the biggest smallmouth, you know? And I mean, I, I, I would just love to be able to get up there one time and knock it off my list. To, f to fish that area much let you know what i mean like yeah. i mean is it easy as they as it looks on tv i mean like you see guys catching them all the time i mean are there that many smallmouth uh to me it's not um <laughs> but i think a lot of these guys have just uh they've got a really unique place found i don't know that many people have a bunch of places and this is just pure speculation of course because we can't get any information but i just from my practice i had two areas and that was pretty much all the areas that I got bit in. And I went to one of them first thing, and they all left. And they were shallower places. You could visually see them in practice. I found them the last evening. They were in about four feet of water. You could just see them cruising on the back of this bay on a flat. And they just totally left. And uh, so I went to my second place, and luckily they were still there. They had just moved around a little bit. But... No, I don't think it's as easy as uh, everybody's making it out to be. This is one of those that I would definitely like to watch the video after it's over and just see what exactly they did different to find those absolutely humongous schools of smallmouth. Yeah, it's definitely. I know just watching, like, when you watch some of the other, like, the elites and, and all that, when these guys go up north, and I'm just like, man, they just catch so many look good-looking fish, you know, and I'm just like, I want to get up there so bad, but um, – but yeah, so Chris, we got we got anything else? Was that our last one for a little bit? Last one for right now. Okay, well, let's kind of let's get into uh, we normally do an in depth segment, and we cover a lot with uh, technique specific wise, you know. So right now we're in the heat of the summer. Uh, let's kind of get back. Let's get away from up north. Let's let's say we're back down about uh, mid Atlantic area, something like that, and. Let's talk about summertime bass fishing. And what are some things that you were looking for when we're in the heat of the summer during the day? What are some things you're looking for to start finding those good quality largemouth? From now, I mean, starting in July, end of June, July, August, and September, I want to look for some sort of isolated cover. And that can definitely vary from lake to lake, from anything to rock piles or a, an individual stump on a flat. Uh, to a brush pile, to a clump of grass. But I want to look for something that those fish can set up on individually, one, two, maybe three fish on a place. I don't look for big schools anymore. After June, that kind of goes away for me. Um, but I just look for those places where I can pull up, run a bunch of places, 
and try and pick off a fish here and a fish there. Yeah. Now, when it when it comes to bait wise, what is your let, let's go with about let's say three baits. What is your top three baits this time of the year when you're trying to pick a, pick apart some of these spots and 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 catching them? Uh, so that's going to be a, a very depth dependent question, but. I mean, we could still go it into three because you've got some shallow rivers. You may be fishing two feet of water all summer, but that's yeah. just where they live. So, uh, for one, it would be always a vibrating jig. I mean, that's just not just a summertime deal. That's a 365 days a year. I'm going to have that tied on. Uh, the second one would be uh, probably a big worm, you know, something like a 10 inch big bite B2 worm, big ribbon tail, uh, plum or red bug, green pumpkin, just Dependent on the water color but typically those slower moving baits like that are going to be the ones that are going to be the best the, the fish are really lethargic in the summertime and they don't want to chase anything especially up in the day um, but the third one would just it has to be a drop shot i mean those big uh, clear deep water impoundments like you know your clark's hills hartwells places like that it's going to be something that you can really finesse fish use light line fish slowly uh, use your electronics to find those individual pieces of structure and pick them apart. Let me ask you a question. I, I was just thinking about because you're going over colors and all that. Do you ever throw much June bug? Like I, that was my go-to worm during the summertime, like a little Texas rig June bug, June bug worm around docks. I was just thinking about that. Do you do anything? Do you throw June bug anymore? Is that just kind of like, or are you just like keep your color so simple, like black and blue, green pumpkin, you know, all that? I throw it in Florida a lot. Uh, there's something about June bug down there that uh, the fish really like, but other than that, I, I really don't know of a time I even have <laughs> June bug in my boat. Yeah, I used to carry tons of colors and all kinds of different shapes, and about three years ago, I said, you know what? I'm just carrying a lot of extra weight for nothing. Yeah. So I just broke it down. I picked one black and blue color, uh, one green pumpkin color, and maybe a, a lighter watermelon or something like that if it's really clear i uh, i keep no more than three colors of any certain shape in my boat at a time i don't i don't know what made me think of that it was talking about summertime me and james used to, we had an older guy tell us about it one time like hey man this is the only worm you need and we did we used to catch a fire out during the middle of the summer and just kind of got away from it like i don't even throw it no more either and i, I don't even hear a lot of people talk about june bug except like you say when you go to florida uh i, I see where and it, it would probably still work i mean that, there's a lot of baits uh, shapes, a lot of colors, and not just soft plastics, hard baits, um, all of the above that people don't throw anymore. Yeah. And they just, they still catch fish, but everybody just kind of forgot about them. A yeah. good example of that would be a spinner bait. You know, a lot of people had kind of, kind of laid it down for a while. And then last year on the Bass Pro Tour, it seemed like everywhere we went, people were just smoking them on a spinner bait. So, uh, it's just one of those things that every piece of tackle has a cycle yeah but i don't know that it really has as much a cycle with the fish as it does the fisherman that's right and that's what i was gonna ask you because you're talking about throwing a bladed jig is there a time i mean i know you're throwing that a lot but it, when do you say hey i need to throw a spinnerbait over uh, a bladed jig now i will say like i know when a shad spawn is going on a spinnerbait is really really good um but is there what makes a bladed jig better than a spinnerbait all year long I think the versatility of it, uh, to me, is what it's about. It comes through grass a lot better. You can uh, fish a lot of different depths a little better with it. And it's not as flashy. Uh, you go to a clear water place, um, especially with no, little to no wind, a spinnerbait's not going to do you much good. But you can still throw that vibrating jig around and get bites. It's just a lot more uh, versatile than a spinnerbait to me. But uh, there's also times, I mean, spring... And fall, I will throw a spinnerbait a lot when I really think that they're on small shad-type bait fish. But, I mean, they'll eat bluegill pretty much any time, too, and that's when I really lean on that vibrating jig. Yeah. And Chris, say we got a question? Yeah, Shannon wants to know, how do you feel about MLF maybe going to entry fees next year? Can the anglers vote that out or not? Uh, that's going to be one of those things that uh, it's undecided as of now. Um, but as an angler, I mean, I'm just – happy to have a place to fish i mean if, if we pay entry fees that's fine if we don't that's fine too um as long as the bass pro tour is still going well uh which i believe it is and will continue to do so it's not really a big deal to me either way yeah yeah i think you know 
I know when they voted for not doing entry fees and and all that, and that was really I think that's really awesome to have, especially at that level, not having to pay it. But also I think it does kind of help out with the person and not having to pull as much from your sponsors and and all that. And money can go to other things for MLF and all that. So it's kind of darn if you do, darn if you don't kind of deal, you know. And and there's so many different ways it can hurt, and so many different ways it can help. So uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, through the through the next couple of years what i'm excited to see is and i don't know because i haven't been able to keep up much with it here lately with everything going on with our, our, our work but is qualifying to get to that so are they gonna are they gonna have it to where you work your way up through flw and then flw you qualify through that to get into the bass pro tour yes that's the way it is so uh the top qualifiers or the top points finishers in flw pro circuit um, every year beginning next year, we'll have a chance to move up to the Bass Pro Tour. And when that happens, some of the guys from the Bass Pro Tour will get uh, knocked down to the pro circuit as well. Whew, man. That makes that makes it even even more of a pressure cooker on you then, you know, because now you're like, dang, you got to try to qualify to get back up up to that or I'm going to get knocked out. <laughs> right. I, absolutely. I mean, it's just uh, it's one of those things that we've got to have an opportunity to let – other people get into the Bass Pro Tour, and uh, FLW is going to be the way that that is. I fished the FLW Tour for several years, uh, I think seven years, and it was a great tournament circuit as well. So it's a place where if somebody does kick out, uh, we still have the opportunity to make a living fishing. We're not just pretty much thrown to the wolves. That's right. That's exactly right. Chris, say we got a question? Yeah, Chris wants to know, what is your summertime crankbait? Summertime crankbait for me uh, would be a Spro Little John DD. Uh, it's one of those baits you can fish from the 12 to 18 feet uh, range. Uh, most of my fish in, in the summertime, cranking wise, is those offshore Tennessee River schools that you can idle around, graph, and see them. Uh, crankbait is a great way not only to catch numbers, but also to catch a big fish out of a school. So, just that, uh, I throw it on 10 pound line. 99% of the time, I want to get as much depth as I can out of it. And uh, I fish it probably a little faster than most people do. A lot of guys uh, like those slower speed reels and just uh, an average speed retrieve. I throw it on a 6 to 1 gear ratio reel and pretty much just burn it across the bottom. I want to get a big-time reaction bite out of those fish. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Right, now, let me ask you, when it comes to, like, you know, the – you talking about hitting the ledges and all that, and we were kind of getting into the deep summer. Like, uh, I, say, I don't know if you've ever been to some that lake, or let's say uh, Bugs Island, or they're, they're deep water impoundments, but they got good long points on them and all that. Do you do much with, like, like say, a, a, a deep, a super deep dive in, like, a crawfish color? When do you kind of get into that and get away from it when you come to deep cranking and stuff like that? The only time I really throw crawfish patterns in the crankbait is uh, spring fishing just the bank pretty much. Uh, anytime I'm fishing offshore, I feel like the fish are going to be targeting more bait fish. Um, and that may be the water color or conditions may call for chartreuse, uh, chartreuse and blue or something like that. But most of the time, if the water's clean enough, then I feel like I can get away with it offshore. It's going to be uh, like a nasty shad, just some sort of uh, shad pattern. And the, the uh, crawfish colors really have their time in place, but I just feel like that's more of a spring deal. I think the largemouth uh, really key in on those crawfish early in the year, and then I think once they start moving offshore, their mind change, my, their mindset just totally changes from crawfish to shad. Yeah, and see, like for me during the summer, especially like Smith Mountain Lake, I'll have two different deep divers on. I have a shad pattern. And then I have a, a like a green pumpkin. It's like a Rapala DT16 Rapala in that crawfish color. And I don't, it doesn't always seem to get them, but you'll have days where it's like they are just eating that thing and it's a crawfish color. And then there's days they won't even touch it, you know? And it's just, I can't ever get the, I can't ever get it right. You know, like, hey man, I, need, I just need to be throwing this right now. <laughs> Most time it's like, I threw it this week, Saturday, but I went back over Sunday and was hitting all the shad color stuff. He wasn't hitting the crawfish stuff no more, so. It's just crazy how, how they change up on a, one particular yeah, body of water. Yeah. Sometimes it's more of a what can I throw that somebody else is not Yeah. Uh, type deal as well. And if you're fishing a crankbait for a reaction, a lot of times I think the color doesn't matter that much to the fish as it does to the fisherman. So That's true. It's one of those deals that you got to try it sometimes to see how it works. That's right. 
Chris, you said we got a question? Yeah, uh, Shannon wants to know, are you in a good spot for Redcrest, or do you need to finish up good to a good spot in it? I was fifth in the points uh, going into this event, so I think by the numbers, I didn't even have to catch a bass here. But um, I think I'll be okay. I don't want to fall out either. So, I mean, <laughs> it's one of those one of those things where I don't want to lose any, any points where I'm at. But uh, definitely got my work cut out for me tomorrow. Just got to go out there and uh, try and do – Try and find something a little different than what I had going the first day. And uh, with these off days, you've got a lot of time to sit down, think about your tackle, look at maps, and just try and formulate a game plan. And I think I've got a pretty good one figured out, but those uh, nomadic smallmouth will let me know tomorrow one way or the other if I do or not. <laughs> yeah, one day they're there and one day they ain't. You know what I mean? That's just how they are on those places. It's crazy. So, um before we let you guys, I want to ask you one more question, and then hopefully, you know, if, if guys, if you got any more questions for Michael, we might get like one or two more in, and then we're going to let him go because he's got to get ready for tomorrow. Um, looking into next year, what are some bodies of water that you hope that the MLF will hit, uh, the Bass Pro Tour will hit? Uh, is, is there any particular bodies of water that you're looking for, that you wish they would go to that you're like, man, I got a good chance at winning this thing? Uh really anything on the tennessee river when they're offshore sometime in may that would be uh i think you would see a lot of weights like we've seen this week here at sturgeon bay but they'd all pretty much be largemouth and when you find those big schools you can just sit sit on them and absolutely work on them and tennessee river is where i'm from where i've spent the majority of my life so i mean chickamauga gunnersville pickwick kentucky uh, pretty much anywhere along that whole chain i would love to see an offshore event where you could catch them cranking, big swim baits, pretty much anything you want to throw sometime in May. If I had to pick one, that's what it'd be. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds – that's kind of fishing I like watching. I love watching them guys fish deep, fishing river ledges and and, and catching them like that. I, I just – I don't know. I've always loved that kind of fishing. But, Chris, did anybody get anything else in for them? No. Okay. Um, Mike, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I hate to cut you sh too short here, but I, like I say, I know you got to get ready for tomorrow – um, I know you got a lot going on and, and trying to prepare for uh, another day on the water, and you got you got to make some ground up tomorrow. So, once you get plenty of rest, and that way you can get out there and whoop them. Hopefully, <laughs> I hope so. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, thanks for thanks for everything, and we'll go uh, try and do our best tomorrow. All right, man. I really appreciate it. Good luck to you tomorrow, and uh, hopefully, maybe we'll have you back on that you won this thing. That sounds good. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate it. you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, bud. All right. Well, like I say, I hated cutting that short, but I knew I knew he had to get ready. Um, I didn't want to hold him up too much longer. Uh, I really appreciate everybody getting the questions in too. There were some really good there's questions. Good questions there. Yeah, there's some real good questions, and uh, I really did. I mean, like a lot of the questions was asked. I didn't even have to really cover some of the stuff that I was <laughs> wanting to cover. They already got it. So yeah. I, I love it when when our followers get involved and ask those questions, I really like that. So thanks a lot guys for kind of getting involved and, and asking those, uh, asking those questions. So, but guys, make sure that you tune in. You can download the major league fishing app on your cell phone and it's a uh, Apple. It's uh, uh, why am I uh, Android and you can go in there and you can watch it live when, when they, you know, when they go live, they also have a lot of content on there for, uh, interviews with the guys they they have tips and tricks on there um, so if you haven't downloaded it yet on your uh, cell phone make sure you go download it and that way you can follow along if you're at work or if you're let's say you're driving down the road you want to put it on to your car just to listen to it don't watch it because that's not safe no, but it's not very safe no but you can listen to it and that's what i do a lot of times i'll just listen to it and see what uh commentators are saying and, and what got listen to what they're catching so um but they got some really great content on there. If you like that, if you love like following major league fishing and MLF, you know, I mean, Bass Pro Tour, all that stuff. So, uh, make sure you go in there and check that out. They're also going to be on discovery channel. Uh, I'm not sure on the times on that now. Cause I know some things got kind of swapped up. So anyways, you can go on their website or on their app and it's got all their times for, uh, everything. So what was that, Chris? Uh, I'm just building a scene. Oh, hitting, to. hitting buttons and, didn't want you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Ron never got back with us for the RBT custom bait, but like I said, he might be busy right now. I got with him late. So we're going to go ahead and pick a winner here shortly. Chris is kind of building all that up. 
Um, but we will be getting a RBT custom, um, some RBT custom lures sent out to to the winner. Also, if you are watching this show right now, please hit the like button. Um, we, we love getting getting the likes. We love getting the shares. If you guys can share it. Also, if you are tomorrow when it's up on iTunes, hopefully I'll do better and get this thing up on iTunes quicker than I did the last show. Um, please, you know, if you like our show, give us a five star rating. And also, we love to hear the see the comments in the bottom. You know why you like our show or um, and, and all that. So if you if you can take the time to do that. Also, I talked about it last time. We were on a, a an app called Podbean, which I didn't even know what this was. So if you're not on iTunes and you're on Android, uh, you can download Podbean. Not sure if it's free. The only reason why I knew is because we got a comment yeah. <laughs> from it. I'm like, what is Podbean? So a lot of you might already know, but you can go on Podbean. You can listen to our shows. We're also on Stitcher, uh, iTunes, all the normal podcast platforms. Yeah. So, but... um. There was one more thing I wanted to cover, and it totally slipped my mind. But, anyways, so guys, make sure you go check us out there. Uh, we will be doing another show this coming up Sunday. I'm working on that right now, trying to get all that lined up. Uh, but I want to th- congratulate Russ Snyder. If you guys are watching, uh, please go on there, go to Russ Snyder's Facebook page, congratulate him on winning the Hobie Open Series today. I mean, that dude. Where was that at? Uh, I cannot remember where that one was at. Uh, I want to say it was in Kentucky. I think that's where that one was at. I could be wrong on that, so if y'all want to correct me, you can. But Russ Snyder, man, he gets it done in KBF. He wins AOI in KBF. He wins a BOS event. I mean, this dude, anywhere he goes, he catches them. All he does is win. That's all he does is win. Who said that? Was it Denny Hamlin? Was it Denny Hamlin? Yeah, but he got it from a song. Yeah. All we do is win. Yeah. (laughs) So... I mean, he is, we've had him on a show before, and that guy is just, he's down to earth, super nice guy, and it couldn't happen to a better person. So congratulations to Russ Snyder. Um, maybe we can work out something to get him on, too, uh, here the next for the next Sunday. Um, but like I say, big congrats. Also, guys, you can go on oneobjectivebf.com. We have some new gear, some new, um, I say gear. New products, stuff. new stuff, things. <laughs> we got. We're now uh, a dealer for real snot. So if hey Chris, can you hand me that bottle right there? Where is it? It's right here behind the speaker. Sorry to put you kind of in predicament, oh. but it's easier. There it is, right there. It's right behind the big speaker. Oh. Yep, there we go. Oh, there we go. Good catch. Uh, real snot. This is the garlic. They can't see that. Let me. Right here. Look at here. Here, I'm, I'm gonna toss it to you. We got all kinds of magic tricks going here. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Real snot garlic. I use that on my jigs. I love putting garlic smell, spraying garlic stuff on my jigs. I've used uh, the yum stuff. The other problem I had with the yum stuff was is the bottle half a time would bust in my bass boat. It would get hot, whatever. Never had no issues with this yet in the kayak or in uh, when I take my dad's boat out. I have a bottle in there. They also have. Uh, it's also considered a real in line conditioner. Yeah. Now I don't want to spray the garlic stuff on because I don't want my real smell like they garlic. They make some that doesn't smell though, right? Yes, they yeah, got I thought the, they did. Yeah, they got the Ica proof. They got the Java. It smells like coffee. Uh, so I mean, you know, if that's your that's your thing too. I have sprayed it before. It does smell just like coffee. It's like the the people catch fish with coffee. Well, look at Strike King. They did their coffee tubes. Hmm. It smells just like coffee. I know a person, I won't say any names, who actually took some Zoom worms and put them, put coffee grounds in a bag of Zoom worms. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. how well that worked, but. Hey, man, people do some crazy stuff and it worked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you can't tell them it's wrong. No. I felt, I mean, I've looked at, I've had people want to fish the BFL or just fish with somebody. And watch him rig something, and I'm like, that is the most retardedest thing I've ever seen anybody do. And boom, he catches a big fish. You can't tell the man he's doing it wrong. You yeah, know what I mean? He's, he's proved you wrong yeah, already. Yeah, so you he... can't tell him he did it wrong. So everybody fishes different. Everybody does something different. So that's why it's always fun when you fish these BFLs or you fish some of these other tournaments with people. You learn so much. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you see some stuff you're like, that is retarded. Why did you do? Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. Yeah, hey, it must uh, work. It works. 
Um, but anyways, guys, we got real snot on there. We actually got a couple more products that we're going to have on one objective BF.com. Uh, but we got the real snot, the real snot rags. Uh, we got the NRS life vest on there now. Uh, I got a couple more products we got to put up there. We're also now going to be coming out with, it should be up there. Uh, I was hoping to have it done today, but I had to discuss some stuff with James, but tomorrow I'm going down. We're going to be shooting some videos with some new products that we got coming up that we've had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions about. Um, So we're excited to get some new stuff up this week. But we're also coming out with a longer Kill Guard, which is going to be the Kill Guard XL. So that's going to be on our website tomorrow. Um, So people that have been asking for the Native Slayer, uh, the Titans, some of the Hobies, you need a longer kite. You need need a longer kill for that. So um a longer kill protector shall we say so we'll have that uh in a longer uh longer links so it's about double the size of what ours is right now yeah so it'll be a little bit longer but chris says we need more kayak tournaments on tv we do we do i mean chad hoover and him do pretty well of trying to do like the national championship stuff like that you know but and then Scott Butcher and them, when they did the Tentacle and all that, they did a really good job on Facebook with keeping it live. And, and you know? Just so you know, uh, I can't think of his name now. The guy we was just talking about. Michael Neal? Chad Hoover. Oh, Chad he Hoover. He has a TikTok now. He has a TikTok now. Yeah. Oh, that's what, video. yeah, you sent me, send me the yeah, video the his, other that's day. That's his TikTok page. Yeah. TikTok's growing. I think that's the next big thing. Yeah. I mean, you've seen a if lot of... the government of people, doesn't take it away. That's yeah. What did they say? Is it a China, it's a China yeah, app or China, something? China, something like that. China. Uh, it's a China app. <laughs> yeah, it's the a, Falcon Post, yeah. I don't know. Have you heard anything about, more about that Falcon Post? Shannon was asking about it. Oh, about the new rods. Yeah. They're coming back out with the Kara rods. The Kara rod. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, we, we've had a couple Kara rods that we love to throw. I love throwing the Jason Christie frog and Kara rod. Uh, I love the Kara Dragon Rods, but the X, the Lizard Dragon Rods, not Dragon, as in like fire breathing dragon. Um, yeah. But the Dragon, D R A G G I N. But they got um, their expert rods are really great. I like them. I mean, you've got a couple of them. Yeah, they're good. I like them. They're a light rod, they're a great rod, but it was something about the Kara series that was just a lot of people loved. And the experts, it was like the Kara was more pro, uh, defined of what this is for, you know. And it told you medium heavy, extra heavy, all that. Some of the experts do, some of them don't. So certain things that you're trying to, like, get technique specific with, it was kind of harder to, to tell. So, uh, and they had, like, a lot of, like, they had some pretty cool names, you know. Like, I mean, of course, you know, a buzz bait, spinner bait rod, that's self-explanatory. Yeah, basically. Pretty much medium heavy rod with fast tip kind of deal. So, yeah. Um, but you had some of them that had different odd and end names, you know, all around rod. I think it was that one. It, it I can't remember if it had like medium heavy, medium, but you know, pretty much you know if you've been fishing all around rods, it's gonna be medium heavy. Yeah. But there was other other rods that had funny names that you're like, man, what is, what size is this thing? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see the uh, Kara series coming back out. Um, I think it's it's a lot of stuff that's going to come out this this week here because this is iCast week. This is the week, Basically, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, iCast everything would have been coming out right now. Yeah. You know, uh, what do you think? Let's get into this topic. Did you see the new Apex by Jackson? That kayak, yeah. That ten thousand dollar kayak, or yeah. however much it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. That's mind blowing to me. Yeah, and I mean, man, I I wish Eric Jackson all the best. And what he's doing, but it's carbon fiber, so I mean, I guess it's expensive. I mean, that ain't nothing cheap no. to to make. You know no. what I mean? I mean, you look at the price of a bass boat right now, just laying the fiberglass. How expensive that is! Yeah. Now, are they really worth seven eighty thousand dollars? I don't know, but getting into a ten thousand dollar kayak, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Somebody will buy it. Somebody will, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I maybe mean, it'd be hard to tear it up. That's true. That's carbon fiber. But the thing is, though, man, when it gets, like, it was showing, like, the bottom of it when Chad Hoover was doing a video with him, it was all scratched up really bad. Yeah. So it shows scratches really bad, you know? But let's say you do crack it. I mean, eventually something's going to break. Yeah. Or you're eventually going to run over that one sharp rock that's just going to yeah. dig all the way down to 
just repairing. I mean, you know, how, how, I don't know what it's like repairing carbon fiber and how no, it's going to look either. and all that, you know, because that's like some of these old fiberglass, like kayaks when you pair it. I suspect most people that buy those will probably use them in lakes that are deep. Water. Oh, yeah. They're not yeah. close. But I mean, he's showing it in a river. You yeah. know what I mean? Now, they did have one picture up, and it was a graph that was flush mounted in the front of it. That's pretty neat. I like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, I wish more plastic boats would get into How big something. was it? I think that, I don't know. I got. I, I should have pulled it up before we got on the show, but it looked like I want to say at least an eight, maybe. Oh wow! Could have been a seven. You know, I don't know. I can't remember what size it was. But Chris says no motor, no way. Oh, that's true. I mean, oh, there'll probably be somebody to come to put a motor on it. Well, but the only thing is, though, it's so flat in the back. It's it's even no is no back. Like it's it's sides. Yeah. So I mean, they didn't really show a lot of pictures. I haven't seen a lot of pictures. I've just seen the one with the guy, the promo video that he did. I didn't yeah. see nobody else review it what, yet. Well, Chad Hoover did a video called "The Most Expensive Kayak yeah. Ever" or something like that. And now it's cool because it's wide open in the back. So, it, but everything's kind of built like an angle. So when water comes in, it all just shoots out the back. Yeah, you don't have any scupper plugs, none of that stuff. The deck matting looks cool. It's kind of like that bass boat aspect yeah. in a kayak. But I think is what's going to bass boat bass boat price with a bass boat price, yeah. yeah. But there's nothing in the back. You're going to have to drill into that boat to mount a motor on it. Like there's nothing back there, yeah, to mount a motor unless he designs something later on, yeah, to go on some type of mount for it or something. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean us getting our hands on one, to ten, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to. And then you're going to be off. shaking into knees, drilling into a <laughs> carbon, carbon fiber, fiber boat. Boat is ten thousand dollars. And then again on that too, I don't even know how you would do it because I don't think there's no access panel under it. So you would have to cut a hole. Yeah. To get up under there to put nuts know. on it. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. This be one of the things where if you don't have a you just you're just not gonna have a motor. Yeah. To me, and I'm not knocking Eric Eric Jackson on this whatsoever, when you're coming out with a brand new kayak business, why in the hell would you start out with a ten thousand dollar kayak? I don't know. How much does this thing weigh? Did he say? I don't. It's light. It, I can't Chris remember. Says, Windy day, you're in trouble. I mean, I guess so. I mean, oh yeah, it's got tall sides. I mean, it looks. Look, I don't like drama. I don't like nobody picking on anybody's product. I don't get into that. I don't. But that's just the way of the world. What's it called again? I don't forget. Apex. The name. Apex. I want to yeah. find a better picture of it this. Time. But it looks like people were having like the side of the Gillette handle. Like for a Gillette razor? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So, I mean, but, yeah, it's got those taller sides, kind of like in the Bonafide. That's what I'm wondering. How bad is it going to push you around? And it went, you might have to go on, like, Facebook. And I don't know Yeah, if you like do I said, it. the video didn't have a lot of good pictures of it. Yeah. It showed a few, like, the front of it and whatnot, but it didn't. Yeah, you need, you need to go on Facebook and just kind of pull that up. And... But I want to know... From our listeners and everybody that's on here, all 16 Chris Cable of them, says 27 pounds. 27 pounds. That's crazy. And you're serious? That's how much it really weighs? That is crazy. But, I mean, it's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber don't weigh nothing. Well, true. You know what I mean? Granted, the seat's carbon fiber. Oh, wow. I mean, you watch it, listen to it. But, I mean, man, if anything breaks on that boat, it's going to cost you a fortune. Say the well, seat yeah. breaks. You know, that's probably going to be the main. How much the break. seat would be by itself? The one for the bona fide is, what, $300? Yeah, three, four hundred bucks. It's plastic metal and some. So you know that carbon fiber one's going to probably be like $800. Oh, I bet you this the seat's over $1,000. Now, if you go into uh, his Kickstarter, there it is right there. If you go into his Kickstarter and you donate, which it, I don't know how much you have to donate, you get, uh, look, there's a the seat right there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look very comfortable either. Looks like a racing seat. Well, that's what they said they designed it off of. Oh. It was a, a race well, I'm car seat. Fishing, not racing. Yeah. So. You don't have a, a high back either. That would be uncomfortable after a while, seems like. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool looking boat. I, I mean, mean, yeah. I mean, it, I mean somebody, it's, somebody, people are going to buy it. Well, you know, you see on a lot of things, people are like, that'll be on somebody's yacht. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. somebody's got a nice yacht. Got a, I got a $10,000 car yet. Yeah. Uh, I love the floor space in it. It does have a lot of floor space. Yeah. I liked how you can twist around, you know, the side of it, you know, the seat swivels, you know? Yeah. And you can hang off the side of it and fish, but. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know. We'll if you donate, out. If you donate so much, you get the boat for like 7900 yeah. or something like that. Well, that's still. 
A lot of money. A lot of money. I mean, bona fide, you can buy for that. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, Hobies, if you wanted a Hobie. Yeah. You could yeah. buy a lot of bona fides for that, what? Yeah, $10,000. $10,000. I mean, figure $1,500 a piece. Yeah. One twenty seven. you know. So Have you one buy... for every day of the week? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So, but what I want to know with the, Nick, 10, the 10 people we have on here right now is when is enough enough in the kayak side? I mean, we already got the Hobies. The Hobies was the highest one. At least I think they were. At what, $4,500, $5,000, yeah, something like that. Yeah, which one you buy. Yeah. So when's it enough enough? And when do we say, okay, this is kind of getting out of control? Because it, it happened in the bass boat side. Yeah, and Nick wants to know, do you prefer bass boat or kayak and why? I like both, but that's not the answer you want. No. The the I love the kayak inside because it got me back to the grassroots of fishing. I love bass boat tournaments. I love fishing a bass boat. It's nothing like making a milk run to about four different coves, you know, that you got for a drop shot dock at Smith Mountain Lake. Um, you know, we can run around. I'm like, Chris, let's go to this dock. We're going to catch them on a drop shot here, especially yeah. fishing like a Tuesday nighter. Then I'm going to go to this dock. I'm going to catch them on a drop shot here. I'm going to go here. But if they don't get them, you got other spots you can go. And in a kayak, you got to grind it out, man. You know? So. Well, I think in a kayak, you fish the spots a little bit easier, a little bit. More, more thorough. More thorough than you would with a bass boat. Yeah. So you could come Because like me and you went out, you know, I caught fish at places that I usually never caught them when we went on bass boats. That's true. And there's some times where you caught, you were like on a shaky head, you know? Yeah. You're catching them more on a shaky head. And I'm throwing a drop shot or Texas rig on yeah. them, you know? I mean, so you do, you fish those spots. I mean, we got that one spot we fish at night. Uh, we call it the Q99 dock. Yeah. Which isn't the Q ninety nine dock anymore. No, they I don't. don't they quit playing Q ninety nine. Yeah, so we quite, got to come up with a new name for that. Thought about it. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of ticked me off a little bit. Maybe we ought to just get us a little Bluetooth speaker and <laughs> set it over there while we're out there. Bring back memories. Bring back some memories. Yeah, and also it, the blue light. I don't think he has that blue light on that dock no more. Either. No, it's that it's that uh, that shad light on the end of it. No, this was just like a dock wasn't a little bar area. It was yeah, just like a blue light he had there. Yeah, he used to have the blue light, but see now, remember he, I was catching some off that little swim bait, little stripers I was oh, catching, yeah. okay. or white bass yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So now they got the shad light there. Yeah. Well, the other night I was over fishing, and some dude comes up there and starts throwing a dag on. I'm fishing right there, and some striper fishermen come up and start throwing a throw net like right on my bait. You know, and I'm like, what? What are you doing, man? <laughs> I could have had you a free throw net. Yeah. Well, they would have get my swim bait because. I'm throwing it on, you know, I'm well, throwing that's a what key I meant. tag. You would have had you a free throw net. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but anyways, where were we going with this? Oh, so I like the kayak inside. Like, we went to the river. We'd have never got our bass boat up there. No, ever. No. Even a jet boat. Yes, you would have got to some of those spots. But I think you would have had a little bit more time. Now, when the water's up, you can get all up there all day long on a oh, jet yeah. boat. But some of the spots we were getting to over on the right hand side there, you would have never got over in a jet boat. You no. had to get out and wait it anyway. Because the guys that we pass on jet boat, they were just right there at the dam. Yeah, they couldn't go up where we were going. No. So, um, but I do. I mean, like I say, I had a bass boat. We loved it. Yeah. Um, but just the maintenance, the expense, all that that comes along with it was getting kind of old. I was getting tired of putting a new battery in it every other year on a starter and depth finder battery. You know what I mean? Yeah. My trolling motor batteries lasted for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I blew the motor up at one time, well, that's $4,500 right there just to yeah, get the top end rebuild. Wait, wait to get it back. And all that. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, there was some expense with it, but the family all, we had a good time with that, but we have a good time in the kayaks. And I get the comments all the time. We, like say we post a t TikTok video. All right. You got a $1,500 kayak. And then you put, uh, let's say, combined without a lithium. I don't know, maybe with the lithium. Let's just say you got thousand dollars in a troll motor set up with everything we do. That's the top of the line motor mount that we have actuated everything with our controller, battery box, all that stuff. Yeah. And everybody's like, "Oh, you should have bought a bass boat." Why? Okay, now I have uh, twenty five hundred dollars wrapped up in it. You know, all right, even a tracker. That is a 1990 model. You're still going to spend four or five thousand dollars, yeah, plus in this boat. And now I got insurance. Now I got a half. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you got your maintenance, and you hope that the motor don't have no issues, and they 
took care of it. So, I mean, it's expensive, man, to, just to keep a boat running. And I don't, we, I mean, man, we can put that motor on the back. We pay, what was it to register your boat, Chris? 56 bucks? 68. 68. I haven't finished that. I have to, I still got to finish that. I got to take So that's pictures. gone up. So 68 bucks to register, even if it costs you a hundred dollars to register. That's still a drop in a bucket to what it is with everything with the bass boat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I like the kayak inside a little bit more right now. Um, there is times though where I'm like, man, I don't really like to get another boat again. Yeah. But it won't be a big bass boat like I used to have. The old 40th anniversary. Yeah. Oh, uh, was it the, if you could find any, I was at Bass Pro in uh, Tennessee, and they ain't having hardly no bass boats. They, they had said like one. James was talking to. They had the little aluminum ones outside, but they didn't have no like bass nitros or nothing like that. Yeah. Well, when I talked to James, he was down there looking at the one, and I think it was Hopewell, maybe, down yeah. there at Bass Pro. And uh, they were saying that they are selling, already pre-selling the 2021s now. People putting money down on the 2021s ain't even seen them. Hmm. Because they have no more of the 2020s. Yeah. So, Line them up. Yeah. I mean, people are buying boats left and right. Pontoon boats, all that stuff, man. Yeah, they had a few pontoons, but the one down in Kodak, Tennessee, they didn't have no bass boats. Yeah. Campers, that, they're getting hard to find now. Yeah, I mean, no, you drive Gander, by. Gander doesn't have any campers. Hardly. Yeah. So people were just wanting to get stuff to go out because yeah. they couldn't go on regular vacation. But the yeah. bad thing is a lot of the campsites were shut down. You couldn't even go to a lot of the campsites. Yeah. You camp in your yard, I guess. Shannon wants to know, have you ordered the new D-bomb color? Which I've seen. It's a good-looking color. Yeah, I've seen I have not ordered it yet. I do like it. Uh, I put, there's just several of them that I want to, to get That's my That's another on. Good, good question. Go ahead and finish what you're saying. No, go ahead. After, uh, another good question Chris brought up. Would you try the new sea do What is it? I haven't even seen you that. You haven't seen the new sea do No. Is it all set up for fishing? Not really. It's like almost like a like a UTV sea do it's got a, I think it's got a steering wheel in it. Really? If I'm not mistaken. Like, so is it like the boat? Like, I know they had the jet boat sea dues. Chris is going to have to pull it up for me. Yeah, I I know, because I've seen on uh, Bass River Central where people were fixing up oh, jet wait, skis. Oh, it's a kayak. No, 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 no. I think, he's ta- I think that's the one he's talking about. Let's see here. Well, that guy was having himself a cup of tea on a. Sorry, like, y'all can't see like this right little, now. He's yeah. pulling up the jet skis. I think that's the one he's talking about. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know if I've seen it. But. That's the only way I know how to look it up. Steve with steering wheel. You never know what you'll get on that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, I, I like all the Do new stuff. Do you know the model of it? What they call it, Chris? Do you know what they call it? I'm not gonna look it up that way. I've seen one. It looks like a little, it's like a little racing boat. Really? Yeah. I don't know what they call it though. There it is. See you, Spark. I think that's what they call it. Is that it's it? It's right that right there. there. Oh I've wow! I've seen pictures of it. I don't think they've come out with it yet. That's pretty neat. So I guess it's gonna be like a fishing platform there, right? I don't is know. That that isn't I don't know. I don't know nothing about it. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Like, like say offshore, offshore setup. Yeah. I'd like for them to come out with something like that where you got a daggone trolling motor on on it. You know what I mean? Like an autopilot, something like that. Yeah. You know, I think that would be. I think that would be pretty cool to see. Now he it's, might be talking about the fish pro. They see, he makes this one called a fish pro. Now I've seen something similar like that with guys have been fixing up. See, you got the one down there's yeah, got the see, rails. You got a little place to put your uh, graph depth finder. Oh there's yeah, your graph and there's your cooler. I like that's that. That's probably what he's talking about. That's pretty neat. I mean, but that's offshore. You that's know what 15, I mean? That's sixteen thousand dollars. But I mean, you're getting a motor with that. Yeah. There, here's a picture of it was rigged out. Yeah. I mean, you're getting now, a that motor. That would be pretty neat. You're getting a motor and you can run out anywhere with that. Yeah. Sea Doo Fish Pro. I I could see me using something like that offshore. That looks fun. Dude catching a big red. Yeah. I guess that's what that is. The picture. I don't know what it is. I don't know about the offshore stuff. But I don't I don't know much about offshore fishing, but I that w- I would take that out before I took a kayak out. Did you see the video a while back where the guy was took somebody out shark fishing in a Hobie? And a shark came up. You know how they come up and they kind of bite at the side of the boat sometimes? I think I may have seen that. And he bit holes into the side of the boat? Yeah, that wouldn't be a good day. No. Here. I'm not all about that. I'm not all about that life. I see what a uh, river can do to a good kayak. Yeah. 
when slicing a hole open, much less a shark out there with that could chomp right a hole right through the side of the boat. I'm just not into that. So, um, but, but anyways, yeah, uh, there was one more thing I want to discuss, but, but anyways, that's where we're at. I mean, that, that's what I just want to know from you guys. How much is enough? How much? How I can't even word it right. When's enough enough when it comes to kayak expense? Just buying the boat. I mean, are we kind of finally getting out of what kayaking is supposed to be then when we're getting into four and five and six plus thousand dollars? I mean, look at the rigs now with just the trailers. Uh, Danny Romero, I think is who it is, uh, that does the on, was it on water innovations or something like that, where he makes the kayak trailers. I mean, he makes some really nice kayak trailers, but I mean, you're looking at 2500 plus in a kayak trailer on top of your boat and this and that, and which is, he builds some really good stuff and his stuff is like set up perfect for kayak tournaments. And I could see where people would pay that much money for it. Cause I mean, it's, he's got some nice looking stuff, but I mean, how much, it, when is enough enough? I mean, granted, I guess we can't say too much. I, I was rolling around in a, an enclosed trailer, which I still do, uh, for some of these tournaments, but, yeah. but that's kind of like my camper when I go out of town. So I here's mean, the, here, here's this. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. That I mean, that is a nice setup, man. It was a guy on Bass Pro Central that used to do that. He would go and, and rig out his jet ski. I mean, he had the big bar in the back with the rods that went up at the top. That's a big jet ski. Oh yeah, I mean that's two dudes sitting on there. <laughs> Granted, they're skinny little dudes. Yeah. Well, that's a kid, but that's a kid. Oh, is that a kid? I think that's his son. Oh, so he's or, taking his maybe, son out fishing. Yeah. Yeah, there's your depth finder. Yeah. And there's your... I don't know if that cooler comes with it. I don't know if that... I mean, it was been in a couple of pictures, but yeah. I don't know if that's just like, I don't know. What, I guess that would be the engine hatch. I mean, yeah, it'd be a good little thing to have. It would be fun offshore. Yeah. You just want to go out there and catch some... I mean, like around the lake, it'd be tough because if you're going dock to dock, you got to fire that big motor up. Yeah. Because I'm sure it don't have... Unless they, unless they invented some type of little electric trolling motor to go on it or something. Yeah, like something that would come off the side where you can just kind of hit the button and fold it up and then run onto your next yeah, spot. Yeah, or just have it mounted in the back, you know, almost like a Bixby or something. Yeah. Set up back here. Yeah, and something you can fold up so when you run to your next spot, you're, yeah. you're no, good I mean, to go. have it beside the big motor. Just have oh, it there yeah. all the time. Yeah, that's true. And you just steer it, you know. With yeah. The, it, it's linked into the big motor and you just steer it. Yeah, you steer it with the, steer it with the, the handlebars. handlebars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is pretty cool. But like I say, that's that's quite a bit of money. I mean, then there you go. You got your insurance and yeah. jet ski insurance isn't that cheap, from what I understand, because it's kind of like a street bike on the water. Basically, I mean, a lot of them dudes are running like a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So and then you're gonna want to fix it up because it ain't fast enough. Oh right? yeah, well, you know how we are. Yeah. Oh man, that thing needs a bigger turbo a on it. Turbo on that thing, man. <laughs> that's a little turbo. So, <laughs> but now, nah, guys, we gonna call it quits for tonight. I had a good do the time. Giveaway. Oh God darn! Yeah, we do got to do the giveaway. What? See, that's why I've we got Chris. Picked the winner. I picked the winner a while back. Did you? Oh, you know? okay. Well, let's go ahead and do. I the... picked the winner right after the interview because I thought we was gonna do it then. But we yeah. Didn't. Well, you know me, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna stray away. You got to bring me back in because I'm gonna go. stray away. Bring you back in. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do the giveaway. And uh, uh, ready? That, well, yeah. I saw we don't have a picture, but I promise you, you will get it sent out this week. Go ahead. All right, Ronald Hall. Ronald Hall. Congratulations, Congratulations. Ronald Hall. I will get uh, get us your information uh, on um, Facebook Messenger, or you can email it to us at oneobjectivebf at gmail.com. Uh, you can email us your information uh, where you want to ship to and all that, and we will get you out a prize pack from RBT Custom lures baits thank you ron even though you're not here tonight yeah thanks ron thanks for nothing thanks ron. for not sending us a picture ron <laughs> but but ronald uh, congratulations man thanks for uh, joining the show tonight uh i want to thank everybody that was in the chat or oh, everybody that tuned in tonight and also everybody in the chat that helped out with uh some great great questions for michael neal tonight uh it was nice to be able to get uh another tour pro on we've had a lot of you know the kayak guys we've had uh our last show we had was with uh oh chris help me out with that guy's name that we did with the debt finder show the dr. Fish Do sonar. dr sonar but i can't think of his tag on name but oh. dr sonar on 
We've had a lot of people talking about we need to do a part two on that. So I'm working on some stuff to get somebody else on there to help out with doing a part two of Sonar Setup. You yeah. know, he did a lot with showing us what things were in the game. But, I, you know, it, it ain't so much more you can talk about until you're out on the water doing it, you know, because yeah. you just got to learn your graph. So anyways, we're going to plan on doing a part two of that. Um, but like I say, we're, we got some things in the works for the next couple of shows. I know we've been kind of having some off times. Um, but just with the holiday seasons and coronavirus and all, <laughs> and all that, all that going on, it's been just a crazy, crazy year for us. And uh, just you know, anyways, we're just I'm ready for 2021. To be quite honest with you, I'm ready for this year to be over with. I hate rushing my life, but uh, just all the craziness going on, it's been tough to get so many shows going. So, but anyways, guys, uh, like I say, like this video, share it if you don't mind. And uh, make sure you follow us on YouTube. Make sure you go subscribe to that. We are close, Clarice. We are getting really close to 4,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Oh, man. So, guys, if you can, go check what that out. That? What's that? That rumbling. Either one of my children up there rolling around their bed or oh. Thunder, one of the two. I don't know. Could be Thunder, but. Could be. Anyways, guys, we'll have this up. Uh, like I say, if you're watching on iTunes, please give us a good review if you like it and uh let us know why you like it in the bottom we love seeing the replies and, and why so but we'll talk to you guys later y'all have a good night y'all have a safe weekend see you later see ya